Welcome back. Today when it comes to tvOS, we are actually getting a redesign and a new version that corresponds with the year that tvOS is going to be used in. So if we go into our system update right there and then go to where it says software update, you can see if I do check for an update, I am up to date on tvOS 18.5, but we are jumping from tvOS 18.5 to a new version. You can see when I click the beta updates, we have tvOS 26 developer beta and that's the one that we are going to be updating to so now if i click get the update you can see we have one available with the build number 23j5279m m is highly unstable and it's as stable as unstable as it can be when it comes to this update so i'll quickly update my device and then we're gonna look at some of the new features and changes that this update has to offer my device has been updated and i'll show you one of the new first thing that has been added right here so you can see tvOS 26.0 with the build number 23j5279 m and if i go to where it says software update look at this before this actually never used to have any information but now you can see it tells you that your tv is up to date the build number and it says your apple tv is up to date for the tvOS 26 developer beta i really wish that apple would have put the system or software update tab into the general since they are unifying a lot of things but they didn't do that this time around hopefully we get to see that but you still have to go into the system section but if i go back all the way like this you can see how it has been redesigned this is the new tvos 26 look it has a glass top look if you look at the top dock or the top applications that are moving across you can see how the top shelf doesn't actually uh, cover a lot of stuff it's more of a liquid glass design that's the theme that apple is trying to push across and the thing about this is that apple is actually pushing it across not just tvOS ios or macOS. they are pushing it for all their software updates so this is the theme for this year the liquid glass design if you don't like it well maybe too bad because you're gonna get it across many other platforms but i want to show you a new application that has been added and it's called sync so i didn't add this application there it added itself if i open it it opens the apple music app and i know that because if i double tap the tv app it shows which application it is and it's basically a new section that says sing at the top of the music and if i go down you can see songs for beginners where it will help you basically start singing and get used to this new feature and once you tap into it it will have a new splash screen that says welcome to the sing mic era connect your iphone mic and hear your voice play on your tv add reverb lower the vocals turn your volume up and down and sing and now you i can scan this qr code that's displayed right there and once i do that my iphone's microphone will be the one that's basically coming out and i'll be able to do karaoke from this so that's been added if you don't want to do this from this playlist or you have one of your favorite songs you can quickly just search it up for example if i go to the search tab and type something like chris brown you can see you know this song shows up of chris brown and now if i go to maybe no guidance right there you can see it's still there and now if i go down i have this microphone icon so this one is the mic icon if i click on it welcomes me to the sync mic era and i can scan the qr code and continue to basically use my iphone's mic as a mic and do like karaoke another cool thing that has been added is that if uh, you have a favorite song that hasn't been in english maybe it's korean chinese or another language you have the ability to actually translate it into english so that it makes sense to you which is cool i haven't 
yet found a song that's compatible but if i do then i'll probably do an update in the next video for tvos i'm not sure if it's because i have just one profile set up for my apple tv but one of the new changes that has been added is effortlessly entry into different profiles so if i go into my top section and try to add a user i have the ability to scan using my phone and once you set it up and you have multiple profiles other than one then and once you do that, the next time you power on your Apple TV, it will basically prompt you to just select your profile. And if it's a locked profile, you can authenticate with your iPhone to sign in. And then your layout and your applications that you have set up for your profile are going to show up right there. If we open up the Apple TV app as well, you can see when you go to the browse section, it's slightly been updated. So if I go and play this, new movie for example it will begin playing and now if i swipe down you can see my info tabs aren't as intrusive as before so they are more translucent and they don't really disturb you from what you are watching and at the same time if i access my control center you can see how it sort of fades into what you are watching to try and give it this liquid glass design throughout the browse tab is one of the areas that's going to be getting an update. It doesn't seem to be as big as what they proposed in the keynote, but it's expected that these thumbnails will be much bigger and it will be a more immersive selection once you are going through the different shows and browsing your shows. The App Store application, you can see how it's been redesigned. Even third-party apps such as Spotify received a small redesign, but with regards to the App Store, when you open it and you select a specific app, I'll select the Sportsnet, for example. If you go down, you can see more information they have been put into different panes. I feel like it's sort of not organized, but you can see if you go all the way down, there is privacy info and slightly below that, you now have an accessibility section. You can actually go to the accessibility tab and learn more. And if accessibility levels have been enabled by the developer, you'll be able to see them right there. It almost feels like I'm on the web when I'm browsing this page because my Apple TV remote turns into like a mouse, some sort of, but if an application has enabled different accessibilities, then you'll be able to see them right there. So let's try another one just to see. So if if we go all the way down to accessibility this developer has not yet indicated which accessibility features this app supports but with time this section is definitely going to be updated by the different developers and you can see even in the app store this glass like design has been implemented you can actually see how reflective it is and as the panels try to move side to side and even the small selectors and ui icons you have have been slightly redesigned up to the more info on privacy tab although the bottom is not that apparent but you can see how the top goes and you can almost see a little bit of what's in the background which is something that's good there's a new sign in method that's supposed to be coming to the apple tv i haven't been able to test it out yet i don't think it's fully functional but it's supposed to let you basically be able to sign in to your different devices without having to physically touch it so you can sign into your apple tv just from your iphone without even having to interact with the apple tv which is a feature that's basically going to try and improve convenience a little bit i haven't been watching apple tv shows but you can see when new episodes are available they are going to tell you that they actually they've been telling us for some time but apple mentions that there's a new lineup of original apple tv shows that are coming up pretty soon there's actually quite a lot of shows you know i haven't been watching on the apple tv that much i mainly just use uh netflix but yeah i'm not big movies or series fan that way but a lot more are going to be coming with tvos 26 under the screensaver settings you can see uh we have current selection and this menu hasn't changed and in fact the snoopy background is still the same but if we go to areas for example we can select areas and under this section you can see we have the ability to now show all or if you want to hide certain you know areas cityscape or underwater and just choose specific ones you can do that by unhiding it but 
if you unhide one, then it's going to hide the rest that you haven't selected. For me, I basically just like to show all. And one of the things that's going to be added as well are new areas, screen savers that are going to be captured across India. And that's going to include Gao and Kelala, which you'll be able to select and have them show as your screen savers. But this basically hasn't changed if I hold the back button of my Apple TV and then tap it back. It's still the same right here. If I go up, you can see my areas. And if I go this side to the memories, it hasn't changed. The portrait is still the same. And Snoopy still has the same animation at startup, at least from now. I haven't been able to see any new Snoopies yet. It's still pretty soon to tell. But yeah, I will let you know as time goes on. If you are a person that uses FaceTime on your Apple TV to connect with your friends or family, FaceTime has been improved. Now it supports live captions in multiple languages, including French, German, Japanese, Korean, Mandarin, and Spanish, in which it can automatically give you captions right there. Look at how the outline of the settings application looks. I, I don't know if I'm a big fan of this. It just looks, reminds me of the old, old versions of iOS, but maybe it will grow on me. We'll see how that turns out to be with time. But if you open this up, you know, you've always had the ability to basically designate a dedicated camera for your continuity. So if you are going to be using your Apple TV for like FaceTime calls, that designated camera will always be the one that shows up. But now Apple has added something else to the audio and video section. So if you go into this section and then go to where it says audio output right there, you can see you now have the ability to select an AirPlay speaker. But not only that, when you select an AirPlay speaker, it can now be said to be the default speaker, which means that no matter what you do, whether you switch off your Apple TV or you switch it back on, it's always going to default to that AirPlay speaker until you change it, which is something that's good. I don't have one that's compatible yet, but it's good to see that Apple has added this. So this is just a quick brief overview of the new features available with tvOS 26. This is the first developer beta. Unlike iOS, you know, this one seems to be pretty good, but some other software such as iOS, watchOS and macOS are more buggy as compared to the Apple TV. Connectivity is good so far, but yeah, this is a highly unstable beta and I wouldn't advise that you update to it right now. For me, I think the UI looks fairly good. It's okay, but it's not something out of this world. Probably one of my favorite things that I like about this is the ability to basically just access your control center and it won't intrude the different shows that you are watching. So that's it for me for now. I'll be updating you as more features come and more features get introduced and some will also be better than get polished. So if you want to see that, definitely hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.